Welcome to another edition of BGA Golf Goss. We have Keen again. Hey. G'day, Wayno. And this Hello. time we have special guest Dave from Ballarat Golf Club. How are you going, Dave? Very well on yourself, guys. Good. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Dave. Um, as we've explained previously, at the core of our business is our golf professionals. We offer a variety of service to support uh, people like Dave, golf shop operators and clubs that operate golf pro shops. Uh, and today we're just going to dive a bit deeper into what Dave's been doing uh, during COVID-19, how it's impacted his business and how BGA has affected his business and has a positive impact on his results. So let's dive into it. As uh, with everybody, including us and then our special guests, we've got a list of questions for you. So I'll let Wayno fire them off and uh, just get the audience to know a little bit more about you. No problems at all. Go for it. So first question is, is actually your, your home club. But um, rather than everyone knows where you are, what was your home club as you grew up? Uh, I started golf at Rossdale Golf Club. And then I moved from Rossdale when I was about 17 to Long Island for about 18 months. And then I quit golf for a few years for various reasons. But when I returned, which led into my traineeship and then into a professional career, I joined Mornington Golf Club. So I'd say that Mornington's probably been more of a home club than any club to me. That's a Victoria day? Uh, in Victoria, yeah. Cool. Mornington Peninsula in, in Victoria. All right. So uh, the next question we have is now, even though you're a professional, you still actually do have a an official golf link handicap. So uh, do you want to uh, share share your official golf link? <laughs> yeah, I certainly do. I uh, must have, must admit, luckily I had a good round the last round before COVID hit. So it's uh, zero point two. Oh, that's good, mate. Very good. And before you were a pro, what was your lowest handicap you got ever got to? Plus two. Well, plus one point eight to be exact, but played off plus two. Well done. Um, how many hole in ones you had? One. One? Where was that? Uh, Centenary Park. So straight after a lesson with my, my coach, I went out there for nine holes with my mum and I hit this shot into the second hole at Centenary Park and basically walked off the tee, put my club in the bag and my mum started screaming and I didn't know what was going on and because she couldn't even get out of the balls in the hole, she was screaming and, and with jubilation. So I didn't actually see it go in the hole, but yeah, only one hole in one. Was your mum your coach? Uh, no, my mum was just there for nine holes, but my coach, uh, I had a lesson at Centenary Park. My coach there was a teaching professional, so we went out for nine holes straight after the lesson. Uh, your best round score and where was it? Uh, it was actually at Ballarat the first time that I played it once I was employed. So I had 64, which is eight under. Um, that's the lowest in terms of under par I've had. The lowest actual score I had, I think, was 63, which was at Elston Week, but I think it's a par 68. So it doesn't quite count. <laughs> I did get beaten that day by a fellow professional at Ballarat. So I had 64 and he had 63, so I wasn't really happy. Oh, the course must have been set up pretty easy. Uh, it was probably the best day you've ever seen in Ballarat, that's for sure. Uh, what's your favourite course? Uh, in Australia or anywhere? Anywhere. Uh, I was lucky enough to go to the Masters in 2016, so that would probably be my favourite course. But in terms of accessibility... Um, I've probably got two uh, courses that I've played. I would say Jack's Point in Queens, Queenstown is pretty impressive um, and the Chicago Golf Club in Chicago. That was a pretty am amazing experience. In, in Australia, I'm going to say the old course of the National. Oh, interesting. Uh, I, I won the trainee event there. It helps. <laughs> uh, your hey, it's, funny, you know, wait, it's, funny, it's like, funny you say that, Dave, because I'm sure a lot of people – would, you know, say that about their favourite course, wouldn't they? Uh, without a doubt. It was Murray Downs for a while and then it moved because I won Murray Downs and then it moved to the National because I think it's a better course. Yeah. Uh, your favourite club in the bag? Uh, favourite club in the bag? That's a great question. Seven iron because it's probably the only thing I practice with. <laughs> <laughs> and um, there's an extra question that's appeared on the, our questions here, which I don't know where it come from, but how many times has Wayne actually beaten you? Off the stick. Oh, geez, quite convenient that question came in. Um, well, I've tried to wipe them all from my memory, but I do know twice, officially twice, once at Woodlands and once at Cranbourne. Um, 
So, yeah, he was, he got lucky twice. He had big excuses for both days. Uh, no, nah, the Woodlands one, you beat me fair and square, except for chipping in three or four times doesn't really, you know, it's hard to beat that. But at, at uh, Cranbourne, my driver had a crack in it, which Wayne was out driving me for the first time ever in his life. <laughs> and, a, and a slight hangover, but don't know whether you want to edit that and <laughs> for that. Nah, love that. Well done. Thanks, guys. So, uh, obviously, we're all in lockdown with COVID-19 and especially in Victoria, we're in extra, extra lockdown. Uh, the only state in the country that can't play golf at this point in time. Uh, as a golf professional and uh, just to, I guess I'll digress slightly, for those that don't know, usually we come across two different models within the golf industry. You either have a club-owned uh, pro shop that employs a golf professional or you have a golf pro that runs the pro shop as a contractor. Uh, so Dave's a contractor and owns and runs a pro shop at Ballarat Golf Club. How's COVID-19 impacted you and your business first and foremost? Uh, very significantly. Um, obviously we got shut down part of the clubs and licensed uh, venue on I think March the 20th. Uh, lunchtime on Mar Monday, March the 20th, we shut down as a club, which included the pro shop and golf course. Uh, so from then on, it was kind of like something we'd never experienced. So me and my staff, my main staff, I've, I've got four staff that are um, non-casual staff. Uh, so it was kind of good to have a, a little bit of a, a break, uh, that's for sure. In the golf industry, especially as a contracted pro, it does take a lot of time that people don't realise. So to kind of step away, turn your phone off, uh, and not really answer any questions regarding golf for a couple of weeks was absolutely amazing. I've got plenty of jobs done around the house, which was uh, great for my wife because kept the marriage going well, which is great. Uh, in the second year, third year now, sorry. So that's, you know, still got to keep the wife happy. Um, and it was just really, really good just to step back and not worry about the day-to-day -day functionality of the golf club. Um, but then after probably two and a half to three weeks, it started to get to a point where it was like, okay, what can we do? Well, not so much what can we do, but what are we going to do to keep our sanity going? So I've been helping out a mate of mine um, as a bit of a labourer, um, just to keep you know my mind ticking over, thinking of different ways, things going forward, and it's been quite good. But it definitely is um, – I'm obviously extremely good friends with a lot of my members – in a, in a personal way, you know, copying messages off them and asking what's going on um, with them, you can definitely see that the impact has been significant across Victoria, Victoria-wide. People are very much lost um, without the access to a golf course, whether that be practising or playing. Yeah. 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 I think that's underestimated. Uh, we talk about a want to play golf, but for a lot of people, it is their outlet, whether it's golf, whether it's fishing, whether it's camping, that's the time that they take to catch up with a mate, catch up with a friend. We know that mental health um, lines have been busier than ever during these times. And, you know, for us in the golf industry, it's not just about those that are employed. It's also the people that play it as, as an outlet, as a form of ex exercise, a form of mental health and stimulation. Um, it has a lot of different impacts and uh, we certainly haven't dived into that. And I think that's a, something we can dive into a bit more in another episode. But um, what are you doing during this time with your business as far as, you know, are you engaging with your members or um, have you got forward plans around how you how you think things are going to happen? Uh, yeah, definitely. So we stepped away for probably a good uh, four weeks completely from the, from the golf club and the, and the pro shop. And then we basically sat down, my staff, uh, myself and Angela Tat, my assistant professional, basically sat down and thought on ways that we can make the experience better to members and guests or visitors when they come to the Ballarat Golf Club. Purely focusing on the golf side, obviously the club, um, that's, that's separate, that's organised by themselves, but things that we can control. So we thought about changing things that probably couldn't get done in a day-to-day -day working environment, um, whether that be with customers coming in and interrupting you or just uh, being open, you know, 12 hours a day, seven days a week, to be able to basically close the roller door, have full access to the pro shop without anyone coming in and interrupting. It was a perfect time to get certain things done. So cleaning, changing the shop around, um, renovate, a small little renovations that, 
don't cost too much money because without income, you can't really uh, have uh, be spending too much money. So that's kind of what we were focusing on going forward. Nice. nice. And um, have, you, have you got any advice for the golfers out there that have been in lockdown? What are things that people can be doing at home to work on their game or to make sure that in some way they're keeping connected with golf for when they get when they are allowed to get back out there? Yeah, definitely. I, I, sorry, I guess with social media, everyone's basically, well, not everyone, but a, a high percentage of people are very much connected to the golfing world via social media. But in terms of their own individual stuff, I wouldn't necessarily be worrying about the golf swing or your technical side. I think a break from the golf overall is really good for your mentality. Um, but things like stretching and your fit flexibility and mobility and strength um, are probably the things I would be focusing on at, at your house because they're things that you can be doing. Yeah, one arm, one arm raises like Wayne was just doing in the video. I've been working on those probably a little bit too much. But definitely things like stretching and keeping your body moving. When you play golf consistently, whether it's once a week, twice a week, three times a week, but week in, week out, your body gets used to moving in a certain way. When you stop doing that, the first time you go out and play golf, it's going to be different. So if you can kind of keep the stretching and the flexibility going through the five, six weeks or uh, however long it is that we're not playing golf for, uh, when you do come back, I think you'll actually enjoy golf a lot more than what a lot of people are probably expecting to come out and stink it up, to be honest. So one thing you mentioned social media, um, there's a lot of forums out there. I know there's one called Golf Swing Tips, which I'm, I'm a, mem a member of that group as well. There's a lot of people that post videos of their swing and ask for advice and feedback. Um, and then it's kind of like playing with your mates, right? Where you know, you might be having a bad day or you've got the slice happening and your mates try to give you a few tips to, to fix your swing. Um, what advice do you have? Um, I, know, I know my experience from it, but as a golf professional, what advice do you have for people that, I guess, get that sort of advice, how they should take it on board and what should they actually be doing to try and um, move forward with their game? Yeah, definitely. I think the easiest way to put it is the more advice you take from your mates, the more time you need to spend with a professional to fix those mistakes. <laughs> so I think uh, it's, it's really hard, but if you if you try and listen to someone that might not have a 100% idea on what's going on or how the golf swing should function, they actually could cause more issues than, than what you think. So without obviously... Um, delving into your swing too much. I think if you can try and keep things simple, I've always had a simplistic approach to, uh, approach to coaching. If you can just try and block out your mates and me, even as a golf pro, I've got mates that play off 20, try and tell me what to do. A um, couple of members, Wayne plays off, what was it? 30, Wayne, but uh, sorry, three. Um, and he tells me what to do. I had to, I had to reassess that because you beat me twice. So I didn't want to say that you play off 30 and beat me. <laughs> just made me a really bad pro. Um, but they always they always try and help, and they I suppose they're always coming from the right place. But I definitely think that with any sort of assistance you have need or, or want with your golf swing, definitely seek out a professional. And there is so many golf pros, um, really good golf pros, teaching professionals. Um, we've got a couple of Ballarat Golf Club, Angela Tat and Andrew Carlidge, that will be transitioning into the online forum. Um, I think it's a must now. So whether that's, you know, emailing in your, your video, coming back with some notes back to that client, um, I think it's a must. And that's what I would be more going towards. The, the golf forums that I'm part of on, on Facebook are more for a laugh than the actual knowledge that they, they give. There's some pretty interesting uh, golfers out there, that's for sure. Yeah, nice. Yeah. I'll share my yeah. Um So when I came into the golf industry, I played off seven. Uh, hadn't had any lessons or anything like that. And being in a, in a head role for a manufacturer, you obviously then get to meet and spend a lot of time with golf, golf professionals. And it's not even just your mates. You know, golf professionals even have different ways of teaching the game and different philosophies. And I got to the point where I would got all these bits and pieces of advice from different golf professionals. And it was the first time. I think the difference, first of all, between your mates and golf pros. Mates talk about your downswing and impact and your stance and your setup, whereas a golf professional will always talk about your, how your takeaway impacts your, your swing. And so I got all this advice about my takeaway and my setup and how to do that. 
And I literally got to the point where I was taking divots about a foot behind the ball or I was sitting up in my backswing going, okay, I know how to get up here now, but where the hell do I go from here? And then literally just didn't want to play the game. So I blew out to 15 from seven. And, um, and then it got to a point where it really sunk in that you really need to get that one golf professional, that one piece of advice coming through and stick with that. And that's really the only way to, to move forward uh, with your game. So for any golfers out there looking for advice, looking to improve your game, find that golf pro, connect with them, stick with that advice and, and go on that journey with them. Yeah, I think that's spot on, Christian, to be honest. I think you need to build a relationship with your golf pro. Not every golf pro will suit that specific golfer. Um, I've got some of my best mates don't see me for lessons. Uh, I can remember one one really good mate told me that he doesn't want to pay me $50 for me to hang shit on him. Um, and because we were so close in a, in a rela- in our friendship, it got to a point where, where I would be like, mate, what are you doing? Don't do that. That's terrible. You know, that's no better than it was last time. And it, it lost that professionalism with that, with that lesson. So it may take you two or three times to find the perfect coach for you, but don't be afraid to try different coaches because when you do find that one that you gel with, your handicap will reflect the, your, the relationship you have. And, you know, to put that into a professional um, tour play scenario that, and only because Wayne and I especially know him, but uh, the, the relationship between Lucas Herbert and Dominic as a party, that's the perfect um, coach to, to play a sort of relationship where you know, they trust each other and that's that's the main thing. They get results then. So should I be able to be coach now? No, well, Wayne, you coach yourself, so... <laughs> Thanks, Coach. Wayne is that bad, Dave, that right. you've just given up on him. Uh, pretty much. Pretty yes, much. We, don't uh, waste my time and don't waste your time, mate. Go find someone else. Is that right? I have, I have said that to a couple of members of Ballarat Golf Club that, you know, if you want to improve, go see someone else because I just can't be bothered anymore. <laughs> Wayne, Wayne may be in that category. No, 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 <laughs> but, but Dave, I, th- I think you say that because, and in all seriousness, because... You, you have different ways of looking at things and you have different techniques and strategies and whatnot. And you, you're saying that you need to try to find that coach to, that fits in with what you're trying to do and your swing character, I guess. Without, so. without a doubt, Keen. Um, there, there's different golfers learn different ways. You've got golfers that love to see their swing on video and only ever want to see their swing on video and they're very, very visual. There's other golfers that like to be told what to do in terms of positions and they adapt and they can work on that. Finding a coach that suits how you like to learn and how you best learn definitely suits your golf game. And that's not just because it's your mate down the road or or something like that. The big beauty about us at Ballarat Golf Club, we've got three fully qualified coaches that all have different ways of coaching. Andrew Cartledge is very technical but very, very good. Edge is more simple, and then I'm kind of in the middle. So we've got three very successful coaches coach three different ways um, that are extremely busy with coaching because of that. Um, and, you know, some of, our, some of our best members have gone to all three of us for lessons, and then they've ended up back with the one that they gel with better. And no problems at all. Like, we don't hold grudges for that at all. We're uh, remembering we're golfers too. We've been there, done it, so we know exactly um, exactly what's going through your head when something isn't working. That's for sure. When you say that, Dave, because, you know, you obviously talk about different philosophies as well, but the coach doesn't adapt to the player. You've got certain beliefs and philosophies that you believe the swing should entail on a golf swing. Is that right? And, and they... Yeah, that's probably more my philosophy. you definitely got to find golf... Uh, coaches out there that will adapt their coaching style for the golfer. Yeah. Um, but for me to develop my, or well, for me to give the best knowledge to the golfer, I work really well with someone that likes to work on impact. If sure. you're a student that likes to not really worry about their position halfway back or at the top of their golf swing, but if they really want to strike the ball well, work on basically a foot behind the ball, a foot after the ball, um, I, I excel with that. 
Um, but if you're someone that likes to talk on positions in the backswing, uh, for me, I think that's kind of irrelevant. It's just my coaching philosophy. Sure. Um, but someone like Andrew, who works from works at the Ballarat Golf Club, he's very big on the backswing. He believes that that's the fundamental of the downswing and gets it started. So two different coaches, two very successful coaches, but have two different philosophies. So um, if you can find a coach that works for you, what you like to hear, then you're only going to listen and you're going to do more. If you go to a coach and you don't like what they say, you're basically you're not going to do what they say, yeah. unfortunately. Uh, that's good advice. And that's good advice. That's good. To put, for, that, for all those at, at home homeschooling, if your student or your child likes what you're saying, they're going to do it. If they don't like it, they don't do it. If they like the teacher, they, they get A's in that class. If they don't, they don't. Yeah, that's good. So I think that kind of raises another thing. Um, it's there's a bit of a challenge at time with the, the golf pro versus the club um, that happens with the industry. I think Ballarat, first of all, I'll say is the best we've seen as far as that support between golf pro club and an understanding of the work involved. There's, there is potentially an underestimated um, value time that's invested on running a pro shop as an individual. Um, and I think even for the, the golfer out there that don't see the amount of work and tasks that a golf pro has what are the hours that you've got to put into your business dave just to just to run it from a, on a weekly basis um well it's a seven day a week job um i might not be at the pro shop for seven days a week but you're always on call especially to the golf club whether that be to the president more so the captain probably running running golf operations the general manager the ground staff or the head super um you're always on call seven days a week for that but my role has probably more changed in the last two years. Um, my, my pro shop and, and the development of the pro shop definitely has started to excel more in the last two years with that change. But by getting the bit greater team around you with, say, for instance, my shop with Andrew and Ange that concentrate more on coaching, my time, I could spend a full week, Monday to Friday in meetings, nearly eight hours a day. That could be with many different people. So it could be with um, council for government grants, it could be future development, it could be with Angie and Andrew regarding coaching programs, it could be with the board or members of our board, the captain, the general manager about programs ongoing. You're not actually thinking about tomorrow, you're thinking about a month, two months, three months in advance. Um, tomorrow should have already been done two months ago. So you're your mind's always thinking so far ahead or trying to think so far ahead that when members or public or gen green fee players say, ask you a question about tomorrow, it can sometimes stump you because you're so you're thinking so far ahead. Um, but my, my hours a week fluctuate. If you ask my members, they probably think I'm there 20 hours a week. Um, especially my mates, Wayne, maybe might only think that I'm there 20 hours a week. Yeah, it might be 10 to 12. Um, but I think it would be, you know, 60 to 70 on call hours where your, your pro shop's running through your head in some way or another. Um, try, I try and switch off on a Sunday, um, but yeah, generally Monday to Saturday, there's something related to golf going on in those six days, that's for sure. So we mentioned at the start of the call, Dave, how um, BGA service uh, pro shops and you mentioned about, you know, your last couple of years and the time you now have for the golf pros and the pro shop or the golf clubs listening out there. How's your relationship with BJ helped you with your business and your time? Um, well, it's helped me. Oh, I couldn't even tell you how much it's helped me, to be honest. Um, when we started working probably two and a half years ago together, I actually thought I had a really good understanding of my business, the, the structure of my business, the financial side of my business. But really, by the time we stripped it back, I had no idea. Um, I was a golf pro that thought he understood everything, but didn't really know too much in depth of my business. So working with yourselves, um, more Christian and keen because Wayne wasn't part of BJ back then, but um, understanding the structures of your staffing, get making sure that that's correct was very, very important. Making sure that um, obviously the role of a head professional, whether it's a contractor or a club employee is definitely changing to a lot more administration. 
as mentioned earlier about looking at three months in advance, it still happens whether you're employed by the club or a contractor. So to have the right staff to manage and maintain your pro shop when you're not there is probably number one, without a doubt, uh, first key point. And then number two was understanding my business, uh, the financial side. So I could set budgets, obviously set goals for my staff to achieve, but it's really it's not until you break down those budgets into category, categories or um, even going into stock items further than that, that you actually understand more about a budget than what you do by just saying, hey, we want to achieve X amount a year, um, which is what I was doing for the first three years of my business. So to break that down now, I have a, a much better understanding of what works in the pro shop and what doesn't. Um, obviously, with a 950 membership base or roughly 950 members at Ballarat, I've got a, a higher percentage of members that come through the shop than what I do green fee players. So understanding and tailoring, tailoring my pro shop to more products that are in demand on a day-to-day -day basis of a golf course rather than the, the one-off purchase that you'd get from uh, probably more of a public golf course um, around, around the traps. Uh, that's probably been the two biggest or three biggest areas of the business has definitely improved. So um, for the golf pros out there that might think that they have an idea of golf, I'm sure you do, and I thought I did, and I probably did, but to be able to dig deeper into that, um, yeah, I can't thank you guys enough. No, I appreciate it. And you, and you get to work with us. Well, that's that's true. I wouldn't mind Keen and Christian swapping occasionally, like, but nah, that's okay. Is that because I'm the better looking one day? Uh, that's, I'll go with that, yeah. I'll, I'll take that definitely, one. Definitely the better hairstyle of the three of you. <laughs> no, and I think that's awesome, Dave. Appreciate that. And, and the main point there was not only just for, for golf business, but for any base business out there. We talked about developing your golf swing and finding the right resource, like as in a golf pro to help you with that. And business is no different, find the right resource. And it's worth sometimes investing in those resources to then get even better results in the future. And for you, obviously it's meant increased profitability, better time management, better better marriage. Um, uh, without a doubt, well, a marriage to start with. <laughs> Um, but no, look, look, that's that's great. And hopefully uh, for our audience out there, you got some good pointers from Dave today and a great insight into the life of a golf professional, uh, what they do day to day. Uh, it is a little bit more than what a lot of people see. And we certainly really appreciate and respect the hard work that our golf professionals do on the front line to keep the industry running, uh, to keep our golf professionals, uh, sorry, to keep our golf members happy, uh, improve their game. And we cannot speak highly enough of the role that golf professionals play in our industry to keep it thriving and moving forward. And, and that is why they're at the key and core of everything that we do. Thanks for joining us today, Dave. Really appreciate it. My pleasure, it. gentlemen. You have a lovely day. And uh, we'll speak soon. All right. Catch you later.